So now we're live. Okay, so here's the agenda. We're gonna fill out class notes. You heard the amazing song. We are gonna do some examples in the book together, and then these three will be assigned individually. So um, treat them like two separate assignments right now, because I think I'll give you five points five points for these. We're doing those separately. So in a perfect world, this will be and this will be done before the end of the period. I may adjust it tomorrow. Remember where uh, in your class notebook. Now I printed out my notes because I like to write on paper. But I'm going to be doing it under the camera. But yesterday we started, remember, by going to the class notebook and those blank notes are in your folder. Handouts? Where did I put them? Class notes. There they are. So we got up to yesterday where we were talking about instantaneous versus We got up to right here, right? So reminder that average velocity can also be interpreted by the slope of the line graphically. You can interpret um, the slope of the line in a position versus time graph. Instantaneous velocity is the graph at a single point in time. They may not be the same at any given moment. So when it's got the average, average velocity, it's just straight distance divided by time. So here you should have 240 kilometers divided by 2.5 hours. And you end up getting, so like if I was going to type in here, I'd end up getting 240 kilometers divided by 2.5 hours, I'll just do HRS, and it would equal, you grab your calculator, you get 96. Don't forget, you have to do your units, kilometers per hour, and what else is missing since this is a vector? Direction. Yeah, and it said to the... East. So now we can complete that. So you'll notice I highlighted all of the examples in yellow. So we'll go on to the next page. Now, acceleration, what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a bunch of equations. And acceleration in general, this is why I'm going to write it down under the camera. If you want to look through your book, this is page 48. So if you want to have page 48 open, while I'm referring to these equations, you might want to do that. It just will be very helpful. It's not going to track word for word by any means because all I did was write down the formulas in the notes. But if you want to know like where stuff comes from and things like that. Okay. So where my blank notes go? There they are. I'm going to change the screen to go to my camera. OK, so I have, as you can see, section 2.2 open. And here's the notes, and I will try to keep it clear. Okay. So, acceleration is the rate of change in velocity. So, if you remember, velocity is like speed. That's, how, that's like looking down at your speedometer in the car. 
Now, let's say you're in the car and you turn on the 405 on-ramp, you have to go faster than just say 35 miles per hour. You actually have to accelerate up the ramp so that you get faster and that's called acceleration. It's like, this is when you hit the gas pedal, okay? So remember the rate of change, we can write that with a delta. That's a capital D in the Greek language. And it's the change in velocity, so that's a V, over the change in time. Which means this is how we're going to write it. We're going to do our final velocity, which we're going to call V sub F. And we're going to subtract our initial velocity, V sub I, and just over the time that has passed. So if I wrote it out of words, it would be V final minus, sorry, um, initial all divided by how long it took you to accelerate. So here you've got an object originally moving north at a speed of 15 meters per second accelerates uniformly for five seconds to a final velocity of 45. Find its acceleration. So we're going to use this formula right here, right? It's going to be the change in velocity over the change in time. It's the final minus the initial velocity. So now I can plug stuff in like this one here. This is your initial. That's what you started at. This 45, you got faster. So that's going to be your final. And of course, time is only five seconds. So it's going to be 45 meters per second minus 15 meters per second divided by five seconds. End up with. So that's 30 divided by five, so six. And these are meters per second divided by another second. So the acceleration units are meters per second squared. So if you're gonna be doing dimensional analysis, always make sure that if you're finding an acceleration, your answer is meters per second squared. And then where are we going? We're going north. Any questions? Okay. Uh, sorry. I'm just gonna, yeah. Is this no the square root of f? Is there a v above it or above f? Yeah, above v. the above the square root of f. Yes, those are v's for velocity. Right, thank you. Delta V over delta change in velocity over the change in time. Okay. If you know V sub I and you know the T and you know the acceleration, so let's say you know A and you know this and you know this, then we can actually solve for any one of these other things. But here, let's say we want to solve for our final velocity. OK, you're going to derive that formula by just doing the letters. You've all done this in algebra. They're called literal equations. So like say you have this equation here and you multiply both sides by T. OK, you'd start here. You multiply both sides by. I should say, so then you get a t equals v sub f minus v sub i. You multiply both sides by t. Okay, so you get a t equals this, and then if you just want this, what does this equation become? You add this to both sides, right? So the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus 
acceleration times time. So this is really handy. You know, depending on what you're looking for, you can just derive some other equation. But if think about this, this is meters per second. This is meters per second. And dimensionally, this is meters per second squared times seconds. So this whole thing gives you meters per second. So it's velocity plus velocity equal, plus velocity, velocity equals. So now we're, we're going to do this example using this equation. Okay, an example, an object is thrown upward with an initial velocity of 96 feet per second, accelerates at a rate of negative 32 feet per second squared for five seconds, find its final velocity. So um, if I asked you, like, why do we have a positive velocity and a negative velocity? What does that mean to you? It's going down instead of up. Exactly. So this one's going up. So we're saying that positive is up and this means down. Even though it's not said, you can infer that. Okay, so initial velocity is here. That's 96. This will be um, your acceleration downward. And then this is T. So if we use this same formula here, right? Since these are notes, I'm just gonna rewrite it so you know where everything comes from. So I'm solving for VF. I put in VI. I put in my acceleration. I put in my time. And then I just plug in the numbers, right? So this is like negative 160 and add that to 96. And you get a final velocity of negative 64 feet per second. And you have to say which direction. And so good, you know, you know, you're, if you think about this, you're throwing a ball up in the air and the ball is coming down. So if you didn't get a negative, it should say something like, whoa, wait a second, what did I do wrong? So you could have forgotten a negative or something. Make sure you got a negative velocity. Okay, any questions right now? All right, I'd be happy to slow down and answer any questions, but here we go. So let's just make these notes. Acceleration applies to decreases. as well as increases in velocity. Obviously, you can push the gas pedal, you can press the brake. So a decrease in velocity is referred to as deceleration. Which means negative acceleration, right? Now, for vertical motion, just like we did, the upward direction is considered positive and the downward direction is negative. In other words, think about it this way. And this always helped me. When I first was starting physics, I thought, well, how come down is, I mean, you could think about a coordinate axis, but I always think of it as gravity is pulling me downward. Gravity is pulling me downward. If it weren't for gravity and the laws of physics, I'd be unstoppable. Okay, so up and down, just like a coordinate axis. Now for horizontal motion, it's a little different. So think along the X axis, okay? So if we're gonna go sideways, then either direction may be considered positive and whichever way you pick to be positive, then the opposite becomes negative. It all depends on your point of view. So depending on, you know, what you wanna do. Now, this GIF or this, this JPEG cut off and that bothers me, so I'm drawing it.
on my paper. Now, there is one thing. The, in your book, it doesn't talk about circular motion for quite a while. But I thought I'd throw this in there because it's a really interesting concept. This car, you've all driven, you've all done donuts in the parking lot, haven't you? I'm just kidding. Um, you know, say you've got a, a car and it's going around and it's on a circular path, but it has constant velocity. So it's going at 10 miles per hour. Okay, something like that. You're just going around because that's fun to do in a parking lot. Is it accelerating? Just ponder this for a second. Is it accelerating? Does anybody know? This is, an, this is an application of one of Newton's laws. So it would surprise me if anybody knew it actually. No. Mark, what do you think? It's, it's not yeah. accelerating. It's not accelerating. Yeah. Do you have a reason? Uh, it says that uh, the car in the circular path has a constant velocity. So if it's constant velocity, that means that it's not changing. So if it's not changing, then the car wouldn't be accelerating, be staying the same. OK. Good to know. But Linus, what were you going to say? I Did was going to say up? yes, but then I heard Justin's explanation, which makes a lot of sense. OK, I agree it does make sense. Why would I ask you such a basic question, though, Linus? What was your why did you say yes in the first place? I thought yes, because the car was going faster and faster in a circle. It would be going faster, but it says constant velocity. All right. Any other thoughts? Can you guys hear me? Hi. Yes, Christopher. This is Mark. I um, I was going to say, I think it is accelerating because velocity. Um, it measures the change in position. So if you're going around and around in the same place, you're technically not going to have any displacement, right? So you can be accelerating, but still technically not end up in a different place. Ding, 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 ding. Mark got it right. All right, let's think about it this way. Now, Congrats. some of some of you have a um, driver's license. Job. If you were driving in a circle and you want to keep your so you're turning and you're driving in a circle, do you and you want to keep your speed steady, like 10 miles per hour? Do you have to keep your foot on the gas pedal, or can you let it go? So you have to keep your foot on the gas pedal to continue going at 10 miles per hour. Probably yes. not all the time. Y yeah, you do. Yeah, I, that's why I said. And, and that's exactly why, because circular motion is different. Facts. We're not going to go, we're not going to do circular motion until another chapter, but I will tell you this. From the center to the car. Now, in order to maintain, it's exactly what Mark said, I believe. In order to maintain a turning radius, you, if you don't do anything, if you don't turn, then the car will continue to go this way, won't it? If you don't turn the steering wheel. So your velocity is along a straight, and it's equal to the, the speed at the point of tangency like this. So right here would be your velocity, but as soon as you turn it a little bit, now your velocity is over here. And this would be your path. And then this would be your path. And then this would be your path. And this would. So as long as you're constantly changing your velocity, as long as you're constantly changing your position, then you are accelerating. OK, and it's because. Well, 
one of Newton's laws says um, an object will remain in motion until another object acts on it. So at every single in instant of this circle, the car will continue to go in that instant until you apply a force of turning on it. And every time you turn, every instant you turn, it changes the, the trajectory because every instant, we'll get into more of this later and you'll do more examples, but it's, that's why you can swing a bucket of water around and it won't fall out, those kinds of things. It's direction of motion is changing. So kudos to Mark. Uh, and good job, Linus, for going with your instinct. And Justin, thank you for piping up right away because most people will say no to that. That's not in this part of the chapter, but like I said, Okay, so for uniformly accelerated motion, where velocity is the same, the V, see how there, and see how there's a little half arrow there? It's half the vector sums of the original and velocity. So this bar means average. So that should be average. So this means average. You're taking the initial and the final and you're dividing by two. So let's say, for instance, you have a problem where an object is moving west at 98 meters per second. It experiences a uniform acceleration that reduces its speed to 35 west in seven seconds. So you're going faster, now you're going slower in seven seconds. Find the average. So use the above equation, hello. So V average equals the initial plus V over two. So it's gonna be 98 meters per second plus 35 meters per second all over two. I don't know what that is. What is that? Um, let's see, 98 plus 35 divided by two. So that is 66.5. Those are meters per second. And that is the average. Any questions? Pretty simple. However, let's say you want to find how slow it slowed down, find its deceleration. So here's the definition of acceleration, the change in time excuse me, the change in velocity over the change in time. So A equals VF minus VI over T. If there's a change in T. So VF is 98. VI, oops, sorry. VF is not 98. Somebody correct me. By the way, if I make a mistake, while I'm doing notes and you catch it and I don't, I will give you extra credit for that. <laughs> okay, the final velocity is 35. And the initial velocity, I would have caught it because I wouldn't have gotten a negative number. Seven seconds. So I don't do this in my head, 35 minus 98. Let's divide that by two and I get negative 31.5 meters per second squared. It is a vector, so I'm going to find it west. Yes, west. Technically, this one should also be west. Right. And now we're going to go back to another question we can answer. Find the distance it traveled. So dimensionally speaking, your distance is equal to the velocity times the time. That's just like the equation you've done in algebra for years and years. So x 
equals the average velocity, right? Which is 66.5. And you went for seven seconds. So how far did you go? 66.5 times seven is 465.5 meters traveled. Any questions? See, isn't this getting fun now? Now we can solve for a bunch of stuff. Like in the first section, it was just like, find how fast it went. Boom. Find the time. Can I turn the page? If I cannot turn the page, raise your hand. OK. Sometimes I get excited. Um, sorry, I was just going to, I think, no, I'm trying to think, should we do problems yet? Um, I think we have enough to do problems. So. Let me check. Just let me see this problem. Yeah. So let's stop at these notes here. And then I want to do these practice problems to be in your book. And um, that way we'll do one concept at a time. Because otherwise I'd be throwing just a ton of notes at you today. So let's get out a piece of paper and start here there are five problems that i would like to do with you and we have 16 minutes so i think we can probably yeah let's do this then we're not going too fast not going too slow Okay, so my proper title is going to be my name at the top of my paper. This is period three physics. Today is the first. Oh, today's October 1st. Holy cow, today's October 1st. Whew. Okay, and on the top of my I'm going to put this is, and this is one through five, and you can even add this if you want. This, these problems are practice to be. This is my reusable paper notebook. So the ink is a little shiny at times, but uh, I love it. OK, so we're going to do average acceleration. You've got your notes in front of you. And we should be able to do these, right? as the shuttle bus comes to a sudden stop to avoid hitting a dog. Aw. It accelerates uniformly at negative 4.1 meters per second squared as it slows from nine meters per second to zero meters per second. Find the time interval of acceleration for the bus. Now, I told you this on the last assignment and I'm gonna keep telling you the way I do it and the way you'll see me always do it is the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write down the information I have. Oftentimes, if I see what I have, I know which equation to use because you're going to get a lot of equations in this class. And trust me, they will start looking all alike after a while. 
So that always helps me. So first, um, there's four things. There's acceleration, there's initial velocity, there's final velocity, and there's time. So as the shuttle bus comes to a sudden stop, that means my final velocity is zero. My acceleration is negative 4.1 meters per second squared. It's slowing down from an initial speed of meters per second, and I'm looking for time. This is pretty straightforward. So can you already tell me what your what the definition of acceleration is? I think the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Okay. And so if you just know that definition, then you can expand it to VF minus VI. I don't, I don't like, I don't memorize formulas. I just mes memorize the concepts and then that gets me the equation. So if you want to, you could, you know, solve for T, because if you solved for T, you'd get VF minus VI over A, and then you can just plug the numbers in that way too. So um, VF minus VI over negative 4.1 meters per second squared. And then dimensionally, you'll notice meters per second gets divided by meters per second squared, which means you're gonna end up with seconds, which is good. I, I like that, okay. So let's see, I go negative nine divided by negative 4.1 and I get two point, it's 195, so let's just make it, let's see how many significance, one, two, we have two significant digits, so I'll make it 2.2. Seconds. Any questions? Yes, Linus. So, for wouldn't the meters? Oh, so wouldn't there be one more meters left? Oh, you mean dimensionally speaking? Yeah, and also yeah. So, so meters per second divided by meters per second squared. What do you do with fractions? You multiply them. Keep change flip, remember? Yeah. So you keep the first one, change the sign, you flip the second one. Yeah. Well, aren't there, oh, I see, okay. That's how you end up with seconds. Okay, thank you. Okay, you guys do number, uh, start with number two, read it, write down what you get. I think you get the same type of problems. Yeah. So A, B, I, B, F, T. Be right back. I have to get some water on this. That's how I erase my paper. I need to erase it. Now I can use it. Okay. So number two, let's see. A car traveling at seven. Accelerates uniformly at 2.5 meters per second squared to reach a speed of 12. Okay. Yep, same problem. And then once I solve this equation, I, I can just go straight there. Why are you freaking out, computer? Stop. 
My camera's going fuzzy on me. Okay, so T equals, let's see, so it's 12 meters per second minus seven meters per second over 2.5 meters per second squared. What'd you get? Looks like two. Two point oh, did everybody get two point oh? Seconds. Here's the answers. Yep, two. Okay, so unless I see a hand pop up, I'm just going to keep going. Linus, is that still from the last time, or you have a question? Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, that was from the last time. Okay, so number three, average acceleration of negative 0 0.50 meters per second squared. How long will it take? Okay, so again, we're looking for t to bring a bicycle with an initial speed of 13.5 meters per second to a complete stop. So you can assume that a complete stop means your final velocity is here. Same thing, so T equals, see my final minus initial over acceleration. So it's gonna be 27, right? 13, no, I might as well check it. Okay, 13.5 divided by 0.5, ha, 27. And am I gonna do, okay, so that has two significant digits, that has three, so I'll just do two. So 27 exactly seconds. Wow, that's a long time. Everybody with me? I'm usually the one going a little slower than the students, but sometimes I do go faster. So pop your hand up if you need more time, but otherwise I'm gonna keep going and it looks like we have about five more minutes. We can probably do both, we'll see. Number four, Turner's treadmill runs with a velocity of one point, negative 1.2 meters per second. and speeds up regularly. So it sounds like his initial is negative 1.2. Of intervals during a half hour workout. After 25 minutes, the treadmill has a velocity of negative 6.5 meters per second. Okay, so the treadmill, the time is 25 minutes. What is the average acceleration of the treadmill during this period? Okay, so this is only slightly different. How are we gonna solve this? Same equation, right? What do you notice that's a little different about this problem? The average you find time. acceleration. Time is mm. in minutes. Yeah, the time is in minutes. Thank you, Hannah. That's exactly what it is. These are meters per second. These are minutes. So you are expected to convert this, okay? You can convert it now or you can convert it later, but how do you convert minutes to seconds? 25 minutes equals what? Multiply by 60. Yeah, so if you multiply, I just wanna make sure that everybody recognizes that you have to do that on your own, but the equation should still be A equals, Bf minus negative 1.2 is Vi over 1,500 seconds. It should still work. And then we just do the calculator. Okay, so negative 6.5 plus 1.2 divided by 1,500 and I get 
negative 0 0.0035. Zero zero three five, and that's these are meters per second per second, so it's meters per second squared. You could leave it like that if you want. However, since you have two significant digits, you could change this to like kilometers or something if you want, or you could change it to negative 3.5 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3. And I'm saying that because sometimes the answers in the back of the book look like this. So I have some answers here. And oh, look, negative 3.5 times 10 to the negative 3. So just recognize I'll accept either one. But if you're looking in the back of the book, especially in a physics with most of the time, the significant figures will be taken into account. So good, number five, we can figure this out last. Big, big, big. And then you can do one, two. So your homework will be, let me see if you can do the homework, because I was going to do these five with you. No, you can't do this homework yet. <laughs> All right, well, then you won't have any homework. Um, okay, well, don't worry about that. But if we don't finish number five, it's homework. <laughs> and then we'll finish the notes and do those other three problems tomorrow. Okay, suppose a treadmill has an average acceleration of 4.7 times 10 to the negative three meters per second squared. How much does its speed change after five minutes? So delta V um, is what, question mark, after time is five minutes. So we're going to multiply that times 60. Let's get our 60, let's get our 300 seconds. Okay, so part A, right, acceleration is the change in V over the change in T. That's the end of the period, but. So these two things multiplied will give you the change in velocity. So it's going to be um, 0 0.0047 meters per second squared times 300 seconds. 0 0.0047 times 300. Okay, so the change in velocity is going to be and you can go if you need to, but I'm going to finish B and then I won't have to worry about my homework. Okay, so B says if the treadmill's initial speed is 1.7, so if VI is 1.7, then we're looking for Vf. So if that's the case, and I know the change in velocity is 1.41, well, the change in velocity is equal to Vf minus Vi. So then this, 1.41, is equal to V sub F minus 1.7, so I add both of those together, 1.41 plus 1.7, 3.1, it's 3.11, but I'm going to do significant figures and do, yeah, and I'm done, yay. Okay, so you guys don't have any homework, just make sure you look over those, um, notes and I'm going to end the meeting so I can end the recording too and hopefully we'll keep Gordon all caught up with us. Okay, you guys have a good day. All right. Thank you, Mr. Payne. Have a good day. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.